hoverboard is a board that hovers on magnetic energy. I believe Bob Gale was the first one to approach me over hoverboarding, and he uh, steered me to Cornell University, where they were experimenting with uh, maglev technology for trains. So we see that the producers of the Back to the Future franchise were inspired by real-life maglev technology when conceptualizing the hoverboard. The payload capacity of the maglev lift is set to be 350 pounds with flotation heights appearing to range between a few inches to more than a foot at maximum speed. But how practical would it be to create a similar device in the real world? Attaching two 5.5 inch diameter coils to a full-scale props mock hover engines shows the feasibility of using maglev to float a board of these dimensions. Dropping the board into the aluminum plate demonstrates the same springiness and maneuverability as displayed in the movie. So the action of maglev force is certainly feasible, but what about energy? Lifting 350 pounds to a height of one foot represents 350 foot-pounds of energy, which we can then convert to 474.5 joules. The cross-sectional area for each engine is 19.6 square inches for a total of 39.2 square inches. But would it be possible to focus the needed amount of energy within the relatively small cross-sectional area of the 5-inch diameter engines? We might arrive at an answer in looking into the physics of permanent magnets. Magnets store potential energy within their magnetic fields. We can surmise that a rare earth neodymium magnet of the same 19.6 square inch area and 3 quarter inch thickness would be extremely powerful. In fact, a preliminary search reveals that a N42 magnet of 5 inches diameter and nearly 1 inch thickness possesses a pulling force of about 780 pounds. Its repelling force would be comparable as the repulsive forces of magnets are only marginally weaker than their attraction forces. Thus, we can reasonably theorize that more than enough energy could be generated and or stored within the spaces of the hover engines to lift 350 pounds to a considerable height. The main hurdle in realizing such a device is energy efficiency. The amount of power available in a typical house outlet is 1800 watts or 1800 joules per second. If a device utilized this amount of power for 10 seconds, there would be an energy consumption of 18,000 joules, nearly 38 times the energy required to lift 350 pounds to a height of one foot. Looking back to the demonstration, the board weighs about four pounds with an additional three pounds of magnet wire, and we can see that the magnetic force of the coils can barely lift the board to one and a half inches. Considering the approximate energy which could be supplied over a given time, we can see a huge discrepancy due to the very low energy conversion efficiency between electrical energy available and the manifested magnetic force, most of that energy being lost through ohmic heating. If we could devise methods several orders more efficient than coiled wires to generate magnetic fields, we could develop very practical hovering devices. The only remaining limiting factor would be the reaction surfaces, as current mag maglev can only operate over metals and other magnets. Even still, we can make it work. Imagine small smart cities with special roads within which highly conductive non-ferrous metals could be embedded. This will allow for not only hoverboards, but also floating gurneys, levitating sleds, and even small hover cars. A recreation of 2015's Hill Valley could even be created as a popular tourist destination. Just one example of the continuing cycle of bilateral inspiration between fiction and reality.